Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brett Howell from Nitro Auto Lab and we're back with another video. Today is Thursday morning. It's bright and early. We're back in the shop today on the body side of the shop. We do have a bumper cover for a 2010 Dodge Charger. Now this bumper cover, if you look, is warped in several places. We are going to have to use a heat gun um, to help relax this. Now today is supposed to be a little bit sunny, so if we get a little bit of break in the weather, we will get this bumper cover out in the sun and that will help relax it. Um, it was even worse than this. I had luckily had a little bit of sun yesterday and we propped it up outside in the sun and it helped relax it. But the reason for this is because these bumpers a lot of times are delivered folded. Now, with that being said, they are just folded in a big ball and saran wrapped tight to make the box smaller so they can ship them cheaper. So, um, Usually they're not folded too bad. Usually it's just the ends, but being that this is a charger bumper, it is really big and it was folded. And unfortunately it's folded in some areas where if we don't fix this before paint, when we're trying to fit the grill later after paint, we're gonna end up scratching the top of the bumper cover right here. When we're going to set the grill in, we're gonna scratch it before it seats and it's gonna leave a little scratch. So we need to be able to heat this area up and uh, massage it and we'll get it to fold a little flatter as well as a little bit in the lower grill section. Now we just need to heat this up. Shouldn't be a big deal. A lot of times by the time the, the bumper gets mounted to the vehicle and you get these lower sections all mounted up, a lot of times the bumper goes right into place, but it is a good idea to take a little bit of precaution and uh, be a little bit of proactive on it, I guess you could say. Now we do have a grill section here. Now you can see these two pieces. Um, the previous grill was like a satin black. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and just color match this grill for them. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this over that like that. And once that all snaps together, of course it'll be painted to match. We'll go ahead and insert the grill down here. But you can see that it's just touching everywhere. So we need to really make sure that this bumper is massaged in the place before we paint it because we do not want to have to do that afterwards or take a chance in scratching the bumper after it's painted on. A lot of times inserting pieces like this into a freshly painted bumper, um, you do have to be careful because it, even though when they're not warped, um, it's still easy to scratch. So you do have to be careful. Another option is we could um, assemble this grill in the bumper before paint, but um, I don't like to do that because I like to get the paint inside all the edges and all that stuff. So no big deal, but we are gonna have to heat this bumper up and uh, work at it a little bit before we paint. So we are gonna get this prepped. We're probably not gonna paint this until Tuesday. This weekend is Memorial Day weekend. So um, we probably won't be in the shop on Monday, but we'll most likely have this bumper ready to blast first thing Tuesday morning, get it in the booth. Um, inside the spray booth, we do have our 2015 BMW X5. Now, this vehicle came in for several small repairs, nothing major, but uh, all three of the four flares were scraped, like gouged pretty bad. So we did repair those in place. And uh, we do have the, the back of them kind of hanging loose because we did remove the rear bumper because we do have a replacement. We had a pretty severe scratch going straight up and down across this whole tailgate panel. So we went ahead and refinished um, all three pieces because the hatch of course lifts up in the lower section. And uh, there was no damage where the license plate goes, but we wanted to make sure our color matched. So of course we're just gonna go ahead and blend that. So we went ahead and refinished the entire backside. We have a brand new bumper cover. Clear laid out pretty good. We do have a few nibs to do a little bit of color sanding to get out. No big deal. We have a, our other rear flare. And we have our front door. We had a pretty good scratch right in this area. And a couple little chips down here that we went ahead and fixed up. And of course we repaired the scrape on that front flare as well. We blend it up into the front fender. You can see my colors. Doesn't go very high up in here. Up here, there's virtually nothing, but you can see my color. Pretty much, we kind of went into about the back three quarters of the door. 
and uh our color is honestly like i'd give it like an eight out of ten it's not great but it's also it could have been worse so i'll show you guys here we are going to have a little bit of a butt match on this rear bumper up against the rear quarter panels so there's our color um it's not quite as blue um inside this lighting it, it's not a great match but um i do believe in the natural light it'll look just fine um if it's not we will have to uh get these quarter panels prepped out and probably get it back in the booth later today and go ahead and get these quarter panels blended and uh unfortunately so um i really didn't want to blend the quarter panels just to install the rear bumper but um this color just isn't that great so we may have to do a little bit of blending not a big deal if we do um, we could probably do it in a couple hours start to finish so not tripping on that we also have a new rear chrome garnish trim because the old one is cracked if you look here we got a little bit of a crack here and it's obviously not sticking on very well we are going to pop these sensors out we'll go ahead and reinstall those on the new bumper cover of course this lower trim section this piece as well and we'll go ahead and install that new trim and we'll go ahead and get this rear bumper cover installed today um, that way we can inspect the color outside in the natural light and uh as long as it's uh, an eight out of ten um it'll be fine to send but if it's just looking way off then we do have to pull it back in and uh, go ahead and uh, prep these rear quarter panels and we'll go ahead and blend in the rear quarter panels so if we do do that we'll just pretty much be shooting a little bit of color into these areas and fading it out so that way our color from our bumper matches here and slowly tricks the eye into seeing one color into here and if we do that we'll probably most likely go ahead and blend this little bit of a corner as well on both sides just because our rear hatch is pretty much refinished 100 and we do have a little bit of a butt match here even though it's about three inches so we'll go ahead and uh, blend those corners if we're not happy but we will see let's cross our fingers and pray um i really don't want to have to do any more but if we have to it is what it is so on the auto repair side of the shop we do have my buddy's 1960 chevy apache 10 now this truck came in last summer for um, some mirrors. He did have some clip-on style mirrors. I don't know if you guys can see that little bit of a blemish there. But uh, he did have some clip over the door edge mirrors. He wanted to get kind of a more OE style mirror. So we went ahead and installed these mirrors. So what we did is we actually installed rib nuts. So we marked them. We put them about exactly where they need to go based off pictures. And we went ahead and drilled holes. And we set rib nuts now we set three rib nuts in place we crimped them in place put the mirrors on put the stainless steel bolts in and there you have it now we also installed these oem emblems now this was a very difficult emblem to install because of the curvature of the fender and the curvature of the emblem so if we were any higher or any lower chances are there'd be gaps on the emblem so we had to study many many pictures of this emblem to get it in the exact spot because of course we couldn't lay it flat because of the studs that were on the back of the um, emblem and uh once we got it in place of course i had masking tape marked all out we went ahead and matched the other side and we went ahead and popped a couple holes and we went ahead and got the nuts on the back side so there you have it um it's actually in today for a new intake and carburetor so this is a little smaller of a carburetor. He's getting a little too much fuel. So we're gonna go ahead and install this brand new Edelbrock carburetor um, on an Edelbrock Performer EPS manifold. And also he's got a new air filter. Um, pretty cool little grading there. But anyways, if we have any time, we might install this tachometer as well. Um, chances are we won't have time today to get, to get to that. So chances are this will come back another day for install um he also has some new hood springs he wants to throw in 
Um, these don't really take all that long, so chances are we'll probably just pop these on. If we don't get to it today, we're gonna go ahead and just save those for when it comes in for the tachometer. But of course we have brand new stainless hardware. Actually, I take that back, it's chrome hardware. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we use some anti seize it even looks like he got us some. So we'll go ahead and use that. Um, we got a bunch of plugs here for the manifold and the uh, hose, you know, so we got our plugs here, you know, stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and get all that sealed up. We got our new gaskets. We got some RTV, new fuel filter, new thermostat, and of course a gasket as well. So we're going to go ahead and get that installed. The front end of this thing is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's iconic. This is a, an iconic piece of American history right here. So absolutely beautiful. So I definitely admire the front end of this thing. Go ahead and pop this hood here. So there you have it. You can see actually this hood won't even stay up. So we may have to just try to see if we can't change these springs right away. And actually the spring looks much smaller. So hopefully they're stronger because those springs look pretty large right now. So we will see if they are correct, but we'll prop this open for now. And we're gonna go ahead and get this old Edelbrock manifold off and go ahead and get that old carburetor off as well. And uh, it looks like it's a Holly, old Holly carburetor. So we're gonna go ahead and get that off and out of the way and go ahead and get this new manifold set in. So there you have it. Go ahead and close that. Now we also have some Chevrolet letters now. Originally he, when he got this truck, he had talked to me and he wanted to get them painted on. And I just don't like doing that because I just don't think with masking tape, it's very difficult to um, put perfect corners and perfect edges and uh, have them pull cleanly as well. So um, they do make these decals and of course we're going to go ahead and get the surface very clean um, we'll get it well lit out here and we're going to go ahead and apply these decals in each in embossed um, hole here so of course um, we are working inside this channel so we do have to uh, use precaution because we do want to minimize how many bubbles we get if not any at all and uh, just because it is hard to work this vinyl sometimes. So anyways, we're going to get this clean, get the Chevrolet letters installed. That'll just definitely change the cosmetic look of the rear end of this truck. Um, and we're going to go ahead and prop this hood open, get the intake carburetor changed. And uh, once that's done, if we have any time at all, we'll go ahead and throw those springs on as well as the tachometer. But I just don't think we're going to get to it today because we do have a couple other things on the list as well. So I really appreciate all you guys watching the videos. Um, my last video upload was um, my 150th video on YouTube. Um, it was kind of a milestone for me and we're just about 300 subscribers now. Um, the, the channel has been consistently growing um, in every shape, way and form. So super happy. I appreciate all the support. Um, we've been very, very booked lately, and I just have not had time to get back to the Fast and Furious Tribute Jetta. So, um, just an update on that real quick. If last time I showed you guys that we had the transmission installed because we did pull it out when we replaced the flywheel and the clutch assembly. And so we do have the transmission reinstalled, and we do have um, the starter going back in place. We still got to throw the CV axles. We repacked the axles. And uh, so we do got to install the new axles with um, the new hardware and finish getting the starter in place. We'll go ahead and get these wheels back on. We'll have to get some things hooked back up. We'll go ahead and give it a little test drive and it's actually gonna be pulled right back in. And because we are getting ready to tear apart the timing side and we're gonna go ahead and do our timing belt, our water pump, our tensioner. We're gonna do a full tune up cap, rotor, plugs, wires, um, valve cover, gasket. We're gonna fix up a couple other leaks. We'll probably end up dropping this oil pan because it's not looking too healthy guys. And we'll go ahead and seal that up and uh, just basically reseal this thing up and uh, just go through it mechanically and make sure it's all up to par. We don't want a leaker. Um, this car is being built for a showroom. So 
we do want to make sure that it is very clean not leaking oil um, running top notch um, we are also going to go ahead and replace all the brakes we're going to go ahead and get some brand new brake calipers and we're going to paint them um, with a nice finish we're going to do slotted and drilled rotors new pads and uh, we're going to go ahead and replace the rears as well we do have rear disc on this vehicle so we're going to go ahead and replace these rear brake calipers as well um, because they are probably original from 1997 so we're going to go ahead and do full brakes um full tune-up fluids it's gonna have a new clutch flywheel all that good stuff and as soon as that's running top notch not leaking we're going to go ahead and start in on the paint and body work and uh, we are looking for an oem front bumper if anybody knows of one uh let me know because the oem bumper has a removable front lip which will then um, leave a flange on the bottom of the bumper and since this bumper is so damaged, I decided to order an aftermarket, which is no big deal. Um, well, the aftermarket bumper just so happens to have the front lip molded into the bumper. So if I cut that off, it's not going to leave anything to mount the Wings West front lip to. So we kind of do need to look for an OEM bumper because unless I make some brackets, I just don't see a good possibility of this Wings West front lip fitting nicely. And of course, an OEM bumper would always fit better anyways. So um, if anybody knows where one is, shout, shout out at me. Um, I'd like to get a clean front bumper that's OEM um, and probably not run this aftermarket. Um, we already have the Golf grill. And once we have the new headlights, we're going to go ahead and fabricate the um, grill to hood um, filler piece that they've discontinued. Um, should be a big deal. And then we'll go ahead and start in on fitting the flares. We have our wheel flares right here. We're going to go ahead and finish those, fit those up nice. And uh, we still have to order the Wings West side skirts and rear lip and, of course, the spoiler. So um, we are probably just going to do some new strut assemblies with some lowering springs. And then we'll go ahead and get some 19-inch wheels for this thing. Of course, we'll bodywork it paint it white again and then we'll go ahead and get it detailed and uh, we'll go ahead and get ready for the graphics install so anyways get excited on this guys i'm super pumped to be working on it the goal of this is to have this hopefully um close to finished by the end of summer if not finished um i at least want to have it painted and body worked by the end of summer so that way it's ready for graphics so get excited uh, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel turn those notifications on because there are going to be some updates going pretty rapidly fast at some point with this we are really booked inside the shop but uh, any moment i get i'm going to be jumping over on this jetta and uh getting a move on it because i do want to completely restore this thing and uh super excited too so anyways i appreciate all the support appreciate you guys watching the videos if you guys could please hit that like button i'd really appreciate it if you guys could leave a comment down below it just helps the channel out and if you guys haven't subscribed yet hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one Ooh, like lebron though or like bronzo oh i'm a baller yeah shot caller yeah they love me you can't touch me now nah, can't trust me i'm too lucky look at me look at you what you see what you do